Hi guys, Brooks Gibbs here. I um, hope you're doing well. This is for parents who desire to help their kids solve social problems. And uh, I'm joined with two of my colleagues, uh, Jillian and Chris. Uh, Chris, tell us about uh, who you are, where you're from, and why this is a passionate topic for you. Well, I live in Texas and I was a teacher for 10 years. I taught everything from kindergarten through 12th grade, a um, couple different states, all different kinds of schools, rich, poor, big, small, uh, the entire spectrum. Um, but uh, after last year, I stepped out of the classroom to pursue uh, full-time speaking and, and going around the country and teaching parents, students, and teachers the truth about bullying and social aggression and uh, equipping them with effective strategies to handle that. Awesome, Chris has been a longtime friend and um, he's also the co-creator of a game called Squabbles. We'll be talking about that today uh, that he and I uh, created together. I uh, presented Squabbles at Tinker, which is a school on an Air Force base and that's where Jillian is. Jillian, tell us about yourself and why you're passionate about helping kids. Well, um this is my first year as a counselor at Tinker, but I um, have a background in behavior therapy. I did ABA for about um, seven years, and I loved it, and I loved working with a variety of kids. Um, but something I was going into schools, I was in the home, and something that was always coming up is bully, bully, bully. You know, this is happening, this is happening. And... So back to school, I wanted to do more counseling because I feel like it was the biggest issue and I wanted to better equip myself with strategies to help with one of the biggest issues right now. Um, but I will say I feel that the it's just perpetuating. It's never changing and I feel like a lot of this boils down to it's all about changing your thinking that's what I tell kids. You got to change your thinking. But um, yeah, so that's where that's where we're at, and that's what me and my counselor here are trying to get across to the kids. And with your help, we're trying to educate the entire Tinker community. Awesome. Well, this is a video for parents primarily. So I always like to start my parent uh, uh, workshops and seminars with a series of questions. So they're very simple. It's A or B. I know it's a pop quiz on the front end. That's no fun, but I try to make it as simple as possible. So it's a 50-50 chance you'll get it right. It's A or B. All the answers are B, okay? So I do want you to get it right because it's a reflection of what a good teacher I am. Uh, so A or B, uh, do we want our children to A, get easily upset by words or insults, or B, be unfazed by words or insults? A or B, Chris or Jillian? B. B. That's right, B. We don't want them to get easily upset at all. Uh, question number two, so far so good. Do we want our kids to expect others to solve their social problems for them? Or B, learn to solve their social problems on their own, A or B? B. Yeah, we want to be uh, there as a resource for our kiddos, but if we always solve their social problems, they'd keep coming to us, they'd learn to be helpless, they'd also might grow entitlement when you think about it, thinking we are responsible to solve their, all their social problems. So now we need to educate them. B is the, the right answer. Do we want our kids to A, demand that everyone likes them and includes them in every social gathering? Or B, be content with a few friends that accept them and do not seek approval from everyone, A or B? B. B. That's right. We don't want uh, approval addicts. We don't want to raise approval addicts that always think everyone needs to hang out with them and and get super offended when someone rejects them or doesn't invite them to a party. We need to let them know that the richest relationships are just a handful, just a few. More time with less people equals richer relationships. If you try to be friends with a, uh, everybody, then your relationships only go an inch deep. But just a few friends, you can go a mile deep. And so that's what life is all about. Uh, a or B, uh, do we want our kids to explode in anger if they experience a push or a shove that does not cause pain or B ignore a push or a shove that does not uh, cause pain A or B B B okay you both are very right uh, you know because kids are physical sports can be defined as organized aggression it, they're just physical if you fly off the handle in anger when you're pushed or shoved and there's no pain you're going to be a poor or sore loser no one's going to want to play with you so we want to build up also a little bit of the physical resilience of our children by building up their emotional resilience. 
because if they think it hurts and it really doesn't, <laughs> it could still hurt them. They could have a physical manifestation. It's called psychosomatic as I think, so my body reacts. And so we can actually build up their physical resilience by building up their emotional resilience. How is emotional resilience developed, A or B, by being A, protected from adversity or B, going through adversity, A or B? B. B. That's right. Uh, this is the probably most difficult uh, answer that uh, parents have to give. I guess building up the emotional resilience of my children is going to demand that there's some aggression or there's some uh, obstacles or adversity. And, and that's the truth. Here's the good news. Physical resilience, well, as you know, Chris, you are a musician. You know, when I build up my physical resilience to playing violin or guitar, I have to repeatedly expose my body to physical pain again and again and again to build up the calluses that will make it resistant to, uh, to sores or getting hurt. But emotional resilience is not built like physical resilience. Emotional resilience is built through education, through illumination, through what I call the Oprah aha. It's, oh, that's why people are mean to me, and that's how I can stop it. Emotional resilience is built through education. And just think how the problem would be solved if your child was so emotionally resilient they weren't offended in the first place. So someone calls them a name, oh well, I'm not offended by names. So someone talks bad about them behind their back, oh well, ain't no thing. Haters are gonna hate, I'm just gonna shake it off. I'm not gonna get upset by a rumor. Someone's gossiping, same thing. No big deal. I'm not going to take part in it. I'm not going to get drawn into that trap. Well, let's say someone's really trying to psychologically dominate me by making fun of my face, race, religion, or mama. Who cares? I'm emotionally resilient. If children are emotionally resilient, they're not offended in the first place, which means they cannot be picked on or bullied and therefore problem solved. Here's why someone's mean to you. Here's how to stop it. And once you know why and how, then your emotional resilience is built. Uh, Chris, this changes everything, doesn't it? Instead of trying to chase and fight fires every time there's a squabble, <laughs> an issue, we're able to empower children, give them the problem with solutions, and watch them develop mastery. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I love the example that we talk about sometimes. It's kind of like teaching a kid math. You know. E you give a kid a math problem, it doesn't, they're not gonna learn to solve the problem if you sit there and do it for them. But if you sit next to them and you coach them and you guide them, and I love that word coach, but if you coach them and you guide them along and then you give them feedback and you say, okay, here's how you can do even better next time, that's where I think the magic comes in and that's where I think the disconnect is a lot of times in building that resilience. There's, uh, I read an article the other day about, you know, helicopter parents, then there's another generation coming on behind that. They're called lawnmower parents. Um, lawnmower parents just want to mow everything over for the kids so they don't have to go through anything negative. And psychology refutes that and says, no, that is actually harming your kids by not letting them experience some of those things, or at least not even educating them about some of those things. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, it, like an attack helicopter lawnmower model. I mean, yeah. that's what a lot of uh, parents are. And, and parents that are watching this, I think uh, as a parent, I know when my kid is suffering, I suffer with them. And that's why parents get so angry and upset because they have their job to do. They've got other kids to care for. They've got bills to pay. They've got family dynamics they have to manage. They have the world on their shoulders. And so to have a child go to school where there should be peace and a, a, a conflict-free environment, you know, that would be their hope, where the kid can just be free to learn. Uh, adding this struggle, this squabble to a parent's plate can just be the straw that broke the camel's back. And, and I feel for parents because they, they do suffer. My kid suffers, I suffer. I, I, there is a connection. There's a physiological reaction to seeing my child suffer. But we have to avoid the tendency of expecting teachers to do something we are not even capable of doing. If we have two or three kids and we can't find the cure to sibling rivalry where they torture each other gladly in our own home, 
How can we expect a school or a teacher with 10 times our problem, 30 kids in the classroom, to keep peace and harmony in the classroom? It's just hypocritical when I, as a parent, demand conflict-free school environments. I have to rather recognize that conflicts are an opportunity to build emotional resilience. And instead of going on attack mode to the teacher, I'm going to be a partner with the teacher and say, how can I reinforce what you're teaching in the classroom so that I handle the squabbles at home as you hang handle the squabbles in the classroom, which is an educational approach to managing kids. And so for the rest of this session, I'd like to break down the three types of aggression that your child will face with the very simple solutions. So next time a child comes to you complaining about their feelings being hurt, you're going to be able to identify right away why someone is being mean to your child and then give them advice on how to stop it. Once you learn this little skill set, you're going to be like a social ninja. You're going to be an expert. Uh, your kids will drink from the fountain of your wisdom and probably bring their kids to come get advice from you because you have a way to see through the clutter. You can see through the fog of drama. And so uh, I know that sounds exciting. <laughs> I know because every parent wants to be a resource, uh, you know, to their to their uh, kiddos. So let's get started. Um, there are three types of uh, aggression, um, the three reasons why people are mean. And I, I like using um, emojis or, or cartoon characters. And on, on the uh, on the screen, you'll see right now uh, three types of characters. One on the the left is someone laughing, and that really is. Uh, the most common reason why people are aggressive because they're just joking. They're just trying to be funny. And maybe your child is the butt of the joke or the laugh is at your child's expense and your child finds an offense to that. Well, uh, that's, that's very natural to get offended when someone makes you the butt of the joke. But we have to build up our children's emotional resilience to this by teaching them how to take and make a joke about themselves. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, the second one is um, your child is maybe uh, hurt somebody. And so the, the second reason why someone is being mean to your child is because they're hurting. And this is represented by the character in the middle of this diagram of this uh, picture. Um, there's something your child did or said that is frustrated them so much that they want to, they're angry towards your child. They want revenge against your child. They're really, really upset. And there's a very simple solution to this. Teach your child how to apologize, to resolve the conflict, take personal responsibility for their part in the squabble, and that typically vaporizes the conflict. But the third and final one is what parents are most concerned about, and that's when someone's trying to psychologically control your child, and that's represented by the third character on the right. Controlling your child psychologically is really the definition of bullying, someone having the psychological power to control your child. And so they're saying things not because they care about the things, Maybe they're making fun of your child's disability, making fun of their insecurity. Um, but they've, they're calling your child a particular name. And if your child is, if, 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 if this controlling person evokes out of your child a negative reaction, that gives that controlling person a satisfaction. And, and so that's uh, really a simple solution. Teach your child emotional resilience. Don't get upset. No matter what they say, realize that they're just messing with you. They're trying to play you like like a slot machine and they're pushing buttons and they're wanting to pay out and you're giving them a jackpot of anger and that's why they come back with their friends to take turns picking on you. So those are the three categories of aggression. Uh, I love that it's simple, one, two, three. If it was any more than three, I would be like, I give up. I, you know, this is too much. Uh, but three is really simple. I can, I can do three. And sometimes these combine. Sometimes because someone's hurt by your child, they realize that a joke offend your child so they'll use that to psycho psychologically control them, kind of like a Venn diagram. All three of these categories could be at play at once. Again, though, the solution is very simple. Identify why they're mean and systematically, one by one, starting with humor, then victimization, then fully dominance, layers to solve the problem. Uh, man, when you learn this, um, Chris, uh, it, 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 made everything so clear when you started seeing squabbles on the classroom level, didn't it? It became so clear that I was able to tell probably within the first five seconds of any type of squabble, 
I, I could just look at a situation and just say, oh, well, he's using humor to hurt so-and-so's feelings. Or, you know, nope, this person is really just trying to dominate this kid. Or if I knew a little bit more about a, a certain kid's backstory, I could say, well, I know that this kid feels like a victim for X, Y, Z reason. And he's using his victimization to justify why he's, you know, behaving this way. And it's crazy. Once I understood that stuff, I could identify the problem. I could go to that kid that was a victim and say, hey, look, this is why this is happening. Here's what you can do to make it stop. I love it. Love it. Love it. One more of it. So we're going to go down one by one real quick, and I'll show you some video clips of how we play a game called Squabbles. And this is a game you can play with your child. Squabbles is a term we use by strategic uh, purposes, really, because it sounds so uh, less histrionic than the word bullying. Bullying comes with some loaded terms, uh, loaded feelings. I usually say the biggest reason why we can't solve the bullying problem is because of the word bully. See, when we use the word bully, usually logic is not used. <laughs> if bully is in the conversation, logic's not. And so that's really important for you to understand. Why would I say that? Because, uh, because I'm, I'm a few months away from my PhD in sociology. That's one reason. I know what I'm talking about. But the other reason is, is next year, uh, at the time of this recording, it'll be my 20th year in the anti-bullying movement. I started on November 7th, 1999. And that was my first school assembly and my first interaction with this topic of bullying. I was from Littleton, Colorado, where the anti-bullying movement started. And I've come to the conclusion that bullying is just like its definition, aggression. That's the definition of bullying. Bullying is aggression. But there's many types of aggression. There's humor aggression, there's victimiza victimization aggression, and there's dominance aggression. So what type of aggression is it? And that's what's important. So let's talk about the first, uh, uh, the, the first reason why people are aggressive, because they're trying to be funny. Uh, Jillian, you see this, right, on the school level when kids are just, I was just joking, I was just joking. Have you ever seen that where kids are all upset and there's a big old problem, there's a big squabble, and it was just jokes at the, at the, at the intentionality of the whole thing? Right, yeah, it's, I'd say that's the majority of um, the, the, the root of all evil, if you will, all the, the root of all bully. Um, it's, it usually comes from, he said this, he called me this name, and um, again, it's just how you respond to this resilient coming from these, these jokes, and then we're, we're kind of problem solving for them when something like that could be easily solved between the two of them. So the game we created for uh, dealing with humor, this type of aggression, is teaching a child how to make and take a joke about themselves. So naturally, the game is called Make It, Take It. Uh, this is a game you can play with your child uh, where they insult you about, and exaggerate something about you. For me, I usually have people make fun of my high forehead or pointy nose or my ugly clothes or whatever, my, my, my spots on my skin and stuff like this. I have them make fun of me, and I show them, I demonstrate how I can make and take a joke about myself. Now, if parents are asking, why is it important to do this? Chris, you're a trained comedian. Uh, why is it important to help children get used to insults? Isn't that inseparable when it comes to humor? Yeah, I mean, and you know, I, I've done stand up for a couple of years now, and the biggest thing that they teach you when you go into the comedy world is that a joke is an insult. It's a joke is making light of something, and there's always a butt of a joke. There's no funny compliment. You know, no compliment is ever funny, but a joke, an insult is funny. And it doesn't matter if it's about, you know, an animal crossing the road. It doesn't matter if it's about somebody, you know, the stereotype, you know, blonde joke or the fat jokes or whatever. Any joke is poking fun at something or someone. That's what makes it a joke. And the response to that joke is laughter. Well, sometimes, unfortunately, it's difficult for, I'm not even going to say kids, it's difficult for people to realize that it is a joke. It's difficult for people to take a joke. 
So when we designed Make It Take It, the point of it was to help students to learn how to recognize when a joke is being made, how to process it, and then how to properly respond to show resilience, but also to keep that squabble as minuscule as possible using the golden rule and some other tactics. Excellent. Yep. I love it. Uh, so watch this video clip as we play the game, make it, take it in the, uh, in the squabbles uh, series of games and uh, watch how this teaches how to have a sense of humor. Enjoy. All right. There's a game called squabbles and this particular game is called make it, take it. You're going to make a joke about me. I'm going to take and make a joke about myself. The funniest joke wins. You can make fun of my high forehead, pointy nose, ugly clothes, whatever you want. The whole goal is to be funny at my expense. The funniest joke wins. I'm going to try to make fun of myself too, okay? On the count of three, everyone say action. One, two, three. You got a big forehead. I know. It's, it's not a forehead. It's a five head. <laughs> Seriously, my whole family has high foreheads. My mom's like starts right here. It's a family disability. Anything else you want to say about me? Pointy, Pointy nose. nose. <laughs> I know, I got like the razor sharp nose. It's like a pencil. You know, I don't have to point directions. I just tell people, go over there, and they start walking. <laughs> Give me a big round of applause. He did great. Now, we, you know, we, we played once, and... Uh, and how did you feel when I was making a joke about myself? Did, did you, did you uh, think I was your enemy or was I your friend, do you think? Friend. That's right. See, friends can take and make a joke about themselves. Some places in like urban communities, they're like, yo mama's so fast, she sat on skills and popped out a rainbow. <laughs> and they'll say, your daddy's so dumb, he died of starvation in a grocery store. People do this as a source of affection. Not to try to hurt each other, but to have fun with each other. Well done. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Now, here's an important note about comedy. If you like telling jokes, if you like making fun of folks for a laugh, there's nothing wrong with you. You're, you, you kind of are like a comedian. But really, uh, well-trained comedians, advanced comedians, know their audience. And for a comedian to ha tell a joke and their audience cries, they've failed as a comedian. They're not being funny at all. They're actually hurting people. So if you really want to be a great comedian, know your audience and know whether they can take and make a joke about themselves and only use your jokes, first of all, on yourself and then on others who are not going to be offended by your jokes. If you offend people, you fail as a comedian. If you want to be a good comedian, you want to make sure people laugh. So make sure they laugh. Our second game, uh, which uh, relates to the second reason why kids find themselves in a squabble, is dealing with victimization or when a kid is hurting. So, uh, you know, when someone's hurt by your child, they're angry. They might have hatred. They might want to see your child punished. There's something your child did or said that has provoked so much anger that there's a real problem. The solution is simple. Are you mad at me? That's what your child needs to ask the hurting person. And then, I'm sorry. That's what your child needs to say once they identify what has hurt uh, the other student. So we have a game called Sorry, Not Sorry. Uh, it's really important to teach students how to dissolve a conflict simply by apologizing. Enjoy this video. In this game, we're going to play a game called Sorry, Not Sorry. It's in my game of squabbles. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're students, okay, and we played a, a game, like a sports game together. What game did we play together on a team? Let's go with the only game I can somewhat do, basketball. All right, basketball, sweet. So it was three seconds left. We were down uh, by two. I did a three-pointer, and I totally missed, and I caused us to completely you know, lose the championship, and you're really mad at me. Your goal is to stay really mad at me, and you think I'm the worst player ever, and I should have never been on the team, okay? Now, my goal is to calm you down, and if I calm you down, I win. But if I can't calm you down, you win. So you stay mad. You got it? All right, on the count of three, everyone say action. One, two, three. Action! What's up? Why are you mad? I can't believe that you failed 
so miserably. What? I've never seen anyone fail so miserably in my life, and I enjoy watching failed compilation videos. Come on, it was a bad. We it was the it was the end of the game, man. There's too much pressure. It's your fault you didn't block that guy. Yeah, well, at least I don't crack under pressure. I quit. Hey, we'll be better without you. I hate you. I don't really care. All right, give her a big round of applause. Good job, good job. Well done. <laughs> All right, come closer. Now, we're gonna try to play the game one more time. Same rules, you're upset with me that I lost the game for the team. I'm gonna try to get you to calm down. Don't calm down, okay? Uh, but I'll make you. On the count of three, everyone say action. One, two, three. You've got to be kidding me. What? A two-year-old could have done that. And you just failed. I know, I know. I was under a lot of pressure. Are you mad at me? Yeah, I'm pretty mad. That cost us the championship. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't ever want to let you down. It's a little okay? late for that. I know. I know. I'll, I'll try better next time. <sighs> There's probably not going to be a next time. You're right. I, I, I blew it. You're, you're like one of the best... You're like one of the best players. That I am. <laughs> well, are you okay? You're like breathing heavy. <laughs> I have very <laughs> bad anger issues and my lungs are dysfunctional. I'm sorry, hey, 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 no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Look, I understand you're mad. You have every right to be mad at, at me. In fact, I'm mad at me. I really messed up. I'm sorry, yeah, we can get through this together, okay? If I don't die <laughs> Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> That's funny, all right. Now, we played twice. The first time you were, you were blaming me and I blamed you back. I blamed you for, for the reason why we lost. I said, you weren't blocking. The second time, you were blaming me for messing up. I took responsibility for my part of the, the, the problem, and I apologized. Which time was very difficult to stay mad at me, the first or second time? Oh, the second time. Yeah. What did you feel when you were trying to blame me and I was just saying, I'm sorry? What, what was it like? Honestly, I personally, as a person, I'm try I was trying to stay in character the entire time. I try not to stay mad at people. Yeah. But, so it was immediately going against my nature. Yeah, sure. And then there was humor to it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was just like. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. You did great. No matter how hard you tried to stay angry, no one really wants to stay angry. No one wants to stay in a perpetual state of victimization. It's the most miserable state of mind ever. And so that's, it, it takes a lot of effort for people to stay mad and angry. And so they're already fighting that, their conscience. So when you're not getting upset, you take ownership of your responsibility. You don't blame the person, but you say, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, that works to your advantage, and it dissolves in an instant. Well done. She did a fantastic job. Give her a round of applause. Jillian, uh, I'm sure you've seen when a, a problem between kids at school just vaporizes, when both can take personal responsibility for their part in the problem and apologize for it. Do you ever see friends become enemies and then become friends again? Yes, uh, quite frequently. Um, but when they do apologize and kind of talk things out, um, it's amazing what happens when the other one feels um, like their feelings were validated in a way. And they feel that just they were recognized. When the other person recognizes that um, what they did hurt their feelings and they apologize for it. it's amazing what can happen and how quickly that fight can turn around. You know, in, in my household, we have a, in the hallway, we have a rug, one of those hall runner rugs, and I've marked it. I should, I should produce these and sell these. But anyways, I took some masking tape and kind of, it looks like five squares, almost like five squares to a hopscotch. And so I have each of my boys stand on one uh, and the other on the other end. So they're facing each other. And it says on the, the first square, I'm mad at you because, and the other one says, I'm mad at you because, and they have to articulate. I'm mad at you because you hit me on the head. Well, I'm mad at you because you 
broke my Legos, man. I worked like that Star Wars ship took like four days. Oh, I'm so angry at you. That's why I hate you and slapped you upside the head. All right, go to the next step. The next square closer to each other, it says, I'm sorry for, and of course it says, I'm sorry for. So this one says, I'm sorry for destroying your Star Wars Lego ship. You know, I just, uh, I didn't mean to do it. It was sort of an accident. It was in my way. I needed to step on that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry for reacting, hitting you in the head. Uh, and then the next step is just a center square. So they both have to fit on that center square. <laughs> and it says hug. And this is essentially, I forgive you. And they hug. Now, sometimes that'll turn into a wrestling match and the other one will hang their full body weight and slam the other kid on the ground. And then they got to start all over. I'm at a you because you hung on my neck too long and slam it. But anyways, it teaches them how to apologize and how fun it is and how simple it is and how rewarding it is to teach your child the simple process of validating. Hey, I did this to you and I recognize that you're upset about that. I'm sorry for that specific thing, specific thing. Now, Sometimes kids don't want to apologize because they didn't do what the other person thought that they did. And we still need to teach our children to apologize, not by admitting to do something they didn't do, but apologize that the other one's hurt or that there's a problem in the first place. So there's different degrees of apology, but we need to help our children find a genuine way to apologize, teach them how to do that. Now, my kids don't even go on the rug anymore. When I say, hey, go hog on the rug when they have a squabble, uh, and I perceive that it's because they both feel victimized. They just say, Dad, can we just do it right here? I'm like, that's fine. You can apologize right here. I'm mad at you because I'm mad at you because. And sometimes they'll say, well, I don't, I'm not that mad. And they'll just go on with their day. And so that's a, hopefully a helpful tool for you. Now, the third game that we created for the third type of aggression is called uh, Stop It. And it's really, really what kids want. They want the... Uh, dominator, the psychological bully, the one that has control over them. They want them to stop and they don't know how to stop them. I first learned this really approach by school psychologist Izzy Kalman, who used these role plays for 40 years to teach children on the classroom level how to stop their tormentor who's using names or words or some provocative way to elicit or evoke reactions that are emotional. So this is all about getting people, mean people, to leave you the heck alone. Let's play this video, actually. This is one that I've had 200 million views. Uh, it's probably my most, it is my most famous video. People have watched this particular clip for over 2,340 years, if you add up all the minutes. Watch this video and enjoy. Call me an idiot. You're an idiot. What'd you say? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're ugly. That hurts my feelings. Yeah, like I care. I'm gonna get you in trouble. Sure, short stuff. <laughs> I'm taller than you, shut up! <laughs> you call me an idiot one more time and I will windmill kick your face. Like I care, like you could do anything in those clothes. <laughs> These clothes are freaking awesome, okay? Sure, plaid and sweater vest. Oh, you have eyes, you can see. Stop being mean. I hate your face. Stop being mean. I hate blonde people. <laughs> All right, give her a big hand clap. She did great. All right, now hold on, hold on. Good job. All right. I tried to stop you. I couldn't. You did a great job. Um, we're going to play one last time. Same rules. You can call me an idiot. I'm going to try to stop you. Don't let me stop you, okay? You keep being mean to me. You think I can stop her? No. 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 All right, I'll try. Here we go. On the count of three, everyone say action. One, two, three. Action. Go and call me an idiot. You're an idiot. Oh, you think I'm an idiot? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I do stupid things. That's true. Yeah, you do. You always do stupid things. I know. You're so smart. You're so lucky. <laughs> yes, I am. You're awesome. Thank you. And you're not. I know. We, we established that. Cool. Look, my happiness is not based on whether you think I'm cool or not. I'm going to be happy even if you hate my guts. Okay. <laughs> and I'll always be nice to you, sweetheart. Okay. No. Isn't she lovely? Thank you. You're welcome. 
I won. Give me a big hand clap. That was awesome. So I love that classic clip. Now it's classic. It's even black and white. Uh, but that has that should show you how easy and how fun it is to teach your child not to give the uh, aggressor power over them. Any comments about uh, the game Stop It, Chris? It's so much fun to play, but it's also so much fun to see the light bulb go off when you get into round two and the light bulbs go off in the crowd, in the audience, or even when you're one-on-one -on -one with a kid just trying to coach them and, and play it with them. Um, you see the light bulb go off of, oh, that's what I was doing wrong, and that's why it was never working. That's why this works. It's just so cool to see that aha moment happen. But then what's even better is watching them take that, use it in a real-life situation, and watch it work. And then they kind of get that little, that little strut happening, that little bit of confidence walking around. And then all that does is in turn, that builds their resilience even more because now they know they can handle whatever's gonna come. You know, Jillian, did you have a similar experience when I came to Tinker? I, I'm putting you on the spot here, but usually when people hear me speak for the first time and, and, they're, and they're thinking I'm an anti-bullying speaker, so I'm gonna tell everyone to stop being mean. I come in and I say, no, here's how you deal with it when someone is being mean. And then illumination comes. Did, did you have a similar experience? Yes. And I, I have to say the biggest thing for me was um, there was a specific student I know that came up to you and was like, oh, my gosh, I get it now. I completely get it. And um, I actually saw him and I told him I was um, going to be speaking with you and <laughs> talk to you about all this stuff. But those aha moments happen all the time and um, kids are using it effectively and seeing changes quickly. One of my favorite stories while I was traveling somewhere in the continental U.S., this little sixth grader came up to me afterwards and he says, yeah, my mom showed me your videos last year. I've been pretty much mastering your techniques, but there's one problem. He said, what? He says, you came to my school. I said, why does that matter? Shouldn't you be happy? He says, no, my sister's in eighth grade and now she knows all my strategies. <laughs> I loved it. He was this cute little puny 75 pound kid who had these little arms. He's like, now she knows my strategies. It is so fun. You can learn more about the game at squabbles.com. Uh, we have more games uh, you know, within the program. And I love that Tinker is, is using this uh, and everywhere Chris goes, all the schools that we get to see uh, you know, throughout the school year are adopting a playful approach to a painful subject. And that's really what we want to do. We want to bring some smiles and some laughter back into, into a, a world where there's so many tears and hurting. Uh, because we, we don't want them to suffer. And sometimes the best state to learn is the laughter state. When you can get a child laughing and feeling safe and you're recreating a potential uh, conflict in the safety of a classroom or a home or an office, uh, they're able to build up their emotional resilience through these games. Any closing questions for me? Uh, I want to show, if, where do you draw the line? You know, kids will come up and they'll be joking and then they'll joke again. And, you know, if they, like you mentioned, the one kid, um, his sister knows his strategy. Say they, they know the strategy. Where do you draw the line and know if something is bullying? Well, great question. You know, where, when is it bullying? When is it not bullying? Well, um, the definition of bullying is... Uh, the same as dominance behavior, which is that third aggression. It's uh, aggression with an intent to do harm, uh, where there's a psychological power imbalance, they have the power to hurt your feelings, power to make you angry, power to evoke emotion out of you, and you don't know how to stop it. So, so that, that's what bullying is. And so the solution is to play the game Stop It with your child, show them how when they're empowered by not getting upset, no matter what the person says, they're not upset, and they're treating them like a friend, then they can't have psychological power over them. But usually when parents use the word, how do you know when it's bullying or not bullying? I would say, uh, you know, the word bullies is, uh, there is no foreign language equivalent. So Mexico doesn't have a word for it. The French don't have a word for it. There's no other language on planet Earth that has the word bully. So what do they call it? They call it dominance behavior in their own language. 
They call it uh, intimidation. Uh, they call it what I told you, psychological control. So I think the real question is, when do I reach out for the authorities to do disciplinary action on, on the child that is harming my child? And I would say, well, there's probably needs to be evidence of a pervasiveness where it really falls in the line of harassment, where your child is unable to get away from the environment in which they are being uh, tormented, maybe like the school bus, they're trapped, or in a classroom, they're trapped and they can't seem to get away or they don't know how to stop it. That's when you reach out to the authority and say, hey, how, how can we help my child not only build up their resilience so they're not psychologically dominated, but they limit their interaction with the one that likes to dominate them. Now, the other thing is we also want to reach out to the cops if there's uh, anything with private parts and personal pain. This is bruises, broken bones, bar for premature bathroom or blood. Those are my, all my bees. So if there's pranks with its humor, but it's private parts involved, we have to reach out to the authorities or at least talk to the authorities of the child, which is the parents, and say this was inappropriate across the line. Um, so those are typically lines that I try to encourage parents to be aware of. But I think most problems you can deal with in your own home using the techniques we gave you today. Any other questions? When children, you know, you're teaching them resiliency and they're, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they're learning these strategies, but it's inevitable. They're still going to come up to you and say, I'm being bullied, you know, while we're learning the process. What, um, what do we say to them when they're coming up to you and complaining without making them feel, um, with, so they still feel heard, I guess. Yes, yes. Well, we always want our children to come to us. We're not asking them not to come to us. So you're right. We need to know how to respond. Remember the four E's. Empathize. Ah, oh, bummer. I'm so sorry you're struggling right now. I really feel for you. Second E, encourage. I believe you can handle this. I believe this is something that you can learn to handle so that, that you don't need me. I'm here for you, but I'd love for you to learn uh, how to deal with this on your own. I, I want to encourage them that they're capable. The third E is educate. The reason why they're being mean to you is if you ask them if they're mad at you, why don't you just ask, are you mad at me? And then apologize if they tell you why they're mad at you. Or maybe they're just trying to be funny and you're the butt of the joke. They're making fun of your blubber or your fat because it's an, you're an easy target right now. And so if you're getting upset, they're only going to continue. Or maybe they're trying to psychologically dominate you and torture you uh, emotionally. Well, know their game. Don't get upset. So I'm going to educate them. But fourthly, I'm going to empower them. I'm, that's the final E. So it's empathize, encourage, educate, empower. I'm going to tell them the th one of the three reasons why they're being mean, but I'm going to give them techniques on how to respond. So next time they make fun of you, why don't you laugh? Or why don't you say, hey, that's a good one. <laughs> you should be a comedian. I'll empower them with the response technique. Or if they're trying to psychologically dominate you, instead of being mean back to them, why don't you say, I hope you have a nice day. You know, or if they're really trying to be feel victimized by you, I'm going to empower them with an apology. I'm going to try to g give them techniques on how they can go uh, solve it on their own. But I'm also going to understand as the parent, as the teacher, they're going to they're going to fail. Uh, just like trying a new math problem, science problem, you're going to fail. We need reinforcement. So I'm going to have to go over these lessons again and again and again, and they're always welcome to come to me but they're going to learn my advice because I'm going to repeat it so much. And the goal is that they're going to know what I'm going to say without even coming to me. So they're going to be able to have their own internal counselor in their head, knowing my advice because they've heard it so much. So parents be prepared to reinforce teachers have to do it for a living. And so should you as the parent educator at home. Well, I so enjoyed our parent training. Thank you so much, Jillian, for being a part of this. Thank you. And Chris, always uh, a pleasure to be uh, with you in your, your neon shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Thank you. Yeah, you blasted all the pixels in my, uh, in my camera. Uh, but that's just a, a reflection of your personality. You are a bright light. Aww. And uh, parents, thank you so much. Check out squabbles.com for more information. And uh, God bless you guys.